Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Here is some incredibly exciting news. Well, it's a rumor for now, so take it incredibly with a grain of salt. Let Maybe let's not get too excited, but when we talk about PlayStation games on PC, there are two games that are absolutely paramount that I hear over and over again ad nauseum for people. If I upload a PlayStation PC game, these two games will flood the comments section, and one of them I entirely expect. That one being Bloodborne. Bloodborne is a game that people have wanted on PC for a long time, especially because the Souls-like games are so ingratiated in to the PC gaming community, and it's kind of funny that that is the case given that the initial Souls games, Demon Souls and Dark Souls, uh, they did, Dark Souls didn't even get a PC release, and Demon Souls got a delayed butchered release on PC, but that, Souls has become one of the biggest IPs, you know, not only on PC, but gaming in general, but on PC, it really pops off, so Bloodborne, I entirely expect, you know what surprises me, every time I upload a video, Talking about Horizon Forbidden West, talking about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, talking about Spider-Man even. The comment section uh, is flood, maybe not with Spider-Man, like Spider-Man was pretty big, but Ratchet and Horizon Forbidden West, absolutely, I saw this. Uh, my comment section gets flooded with, don't care, where's Ghost of Tsushima? Don't care, where's Ghost of Tsushima? Ghost of Tsushima when? Ghost of Tsushima is the only game that matters. Ghost of Tsushima, Ghost of Tsushima, Ghost of Tsushima. And it is a little bit surprising to me that Sony has yet to port that game, because generally speaking, it's a two-year turnaround, two to three-year turnaround for a game to come to PC from play. PlayStation, Ghost of Tsushima came out all the way back in the summer of 2020, and it just seems tailor-made for the PC audience. Well, now, it looks like your worries about Ghost of Tsushima may be alleviated. Now, they should have been alleviated already when it was a part of the NVIDIA GeForce Walmart Canada leak. Uh, I should say Walmart Canada level leak. Uh, that leak was insane. And most everything is coming to fruition. But Shepshaw Nick tweeted out, I'm hearing that we might be getting something about Ghost of Tsushima PC port pretty soon. Maybe around the 5th. I would imagine the 5th of March this month. That just kicked off. This was tweeted yesterday. 2.42 p.m. And Ghost of Tsushima coming to PC, I think, is going to sell an absurd number of copies. And it's kind of interesting to me because Ghost of Tsushima, if you look at it from a critical standpoint, it really isn't one of the best-received uh, uh, Sony exclusives. If you look at its Metacritic score, it's like at an 83 or an 84. Totally respectable score, but I think this is a game that the critics and the players really disagree on, where most of the people that I talk to, they think Ghost of Tsushima is one of the best PlayStation exclusives. And you know what? I agree with you guys. I think the game is awesome. I remember, and I didn't get a free copy of that game or an early access copy, but I was reading the reviews leading into that game's release. And one criticism that I saw over and over again was the fact that Jin wasn't a likable character, Jin was an uninteresting character, Jin, uh, Jin was a bland character, so on and so forth. And I, after playing the game, I was like so bewildered by that assessment from a lot of the reviewers. And it's one of those criticisms that I saw uh, over and over again. And I remember reading that and I was like, Throughout the game, playing through Ghost of Tsushima, yes, Jin starts off relatively bland, but he has an incredible character arc through the game, and the point of Jin being a bland character initially, that is the point of the game. Jin, the whole story of Ghost of Tsushima is Jin betraying the samurai code and becoming the Ghost of Tsushima. When you start off the game, he's the bland, follow the samurai code kind of guy. And you see this trajectory and this evolution of Jin throughout the game that I think is remarkably well done. And where... I saw people criticize the uh, aspect of Jin as a main character. I thought that was one of the most compelling parts about Ghost of Tsushima. I thought that was one of the most riveting parts about that game. And I vehemently disagree with anybody that thinks Jin wasn't a great character. I thought Jin was an awesome character. And I know for those of you that haven't played the game, totally going over your head. It's not really that much of a spoiler. Just know, I personally think Jin's character arc in that game is fantastic. And how they do the ending, chef's kiss. Like, just absolutely puts a... Bow on that arc of Jin's story, uh, they're probably gonna do a sequel, there's so much they could do with Ghost of Tsushima as an IP, or just Jin's story, uh, I don't know if it's gonna be called Ghost of Tsushima, but 
Nevertheless, the game was tremendous, and as far as visually, absolutely stunning game. It initially came out on the PS4, looked great on there, and then when it got its PlayStation 5 release, man, that's where it really got taken to another level, and it looked absolutely tremendous uh, on PlayStation 5. Uh, performance was really good. It initially saw a 60 FPS upgrade on PS5, and then it got the legit upgrade with the Director's Cut being released. And you would think, if it was released on PC, it would be the Director's Cut version, you would get the Iki Island expansion, which the Iki Island expansion isn't anything to really write home about, kind of more of the same, but it's an enjoyable expansion for sure, and it offers a, a decent amount of gameplay, and the game itself has a lot of gameplay. It's an open-world action-adventure title. You guys know what you're kind of getting into, but that is the kind of game that really clicked with me, a lot more so the recent Assassin's Creed games. It didn't feel like a grind, it didn't feel like a hurdle to get through the content, and the content, the side content, the optional content, rather compelling. It didn't feel like it was just tacked on there for the sake of being in there to pad game hours. I never felt like that way with Ghost of Tsushima and you know, hearing the PC audience's reception from how much they want this game, I know my community and the people that watch my videos, it's going to be a very, very small sample size in terms of the relative audience, uh, relatively speaking to the entire audience on Steam. But generally speaking, I have a pretty good hunch on picking up on what games are going to be big and what games aren't. And I think Ghost of Tsushima on PC is going to end up surprising a lot of people. I think this game, more so than a Horizon really does cater towards the PC audience. I really do believe the PC audience has a different desire of games and aesthetics in games than a console audience. I, just, I, I don't know what it is, but, um, you know, this is the kind of game that's going to do really well on PC, even if it's $50, which, you know, might be a little expensive given that the director's cut came out three years ago, but if it's a good PC version and uh, they do justice by that, I think it'll do rather well. And uh, I think this will be another game that showcases to Sony. Man, day and day PC games would be really great because Ghost of Tsushima, while I think it would do well, uh, and Ghost of Tsushima is going to kill it from a commercial standpoint, I think it would just kill it a lot more. I get it why titles like Helldivers 2 are cross-platform releases because they're live service and they are reliant on a strong community where a game like Ghost of Tsushima, that is acting more like a system seller and uh, they want you to get into that PlayStation ecosystem, but I think the people that want to get into that PlayStation ecosystem are going to get into that ecosystem regardless. They're going to look at the games, and the people that want to stay on PC are going to stay on PC. The crossover is there, and there's certainly an audience between the two, and I have a PS5 and a PC, um, but I'm in the minority. It's not like the majority of people are playing on PlayStation 5 regularly and playing on PC regularly, and even if you want to get people into that PlayStation 5 ecosystem, yeah, maybe some people will pick up a PS5, Five and then pick up FF7 Rebirth or a big exclusive like that. A timed exclusive, I should say. But it's not like, and I don't think this to be the case, that all of a sudden that audience is going to leave PC and then, oh, they're signing up for PlayStation Plus. Oh, they're buying a lot of games on the PlayStation Store. I really don't think that's the case. Yeah, you'll get them to buy the exclusives, but that's probably it. Why not just release the game on PC day one? You'll get all the sales from the console people, and I think that will still be a very healthy number of sales. I don't think you're going to eat at it too much by releasing it on PC at the same time. And then you'll get the PC sales as well. And on top of all of that, what have we talked about in 2024? That word of mouth is more powerful than any promotional vehicle in gaming today. And if you release it on PC, the dialogue, the discussion on social media... Uh, Jimmy telling his boy Brian to pick up the game. That's going to be happening a lot more. It's not exclusive to just your multiplayer games. This is applicable to single-player games as well, but I digress a little bit of a rant, but this is the one you've all been waiting for, and if we get news on it, that is going to be incredibly exciting. Hopefully out sometime this summer, because Sony does generally like to release a big exclusive in the summer. Remember, uh, 2023, we had uh, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. 2022, we had Spider-Man. 2021, I don't think we had one in 2021, so I actually Lied. But 2022 and 2023, we did, and uh, 2022 and 2023 were also the years where they got really consistent with dropping titles on PC. So, what makes sense, June July release makes all the sense in the world. That's gonna do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of 
of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.